It's a beautiful day in the neighborhood. Reaction being the yo 502. Set in the neighborhood, my brothers and sisters. It is that time to get into another one of these true crime, horror, dark, deep, and mysterious what the is going on type of videos. And today, it is Wednesday. So y'all know who we about to go back to. My from that chapter. That chapter Wednesdays, y'all. It is always a delight when we get to go back to Mike. And the title of the video is When a Neck Beard Manipulates Kids to Do the Unthinkable. Now, I'm just wondering, man, what Mike mean by the unthinkable, y'all. Like, I got a lot of terrible, like, thoughts going through my head as far as, like, what the freak he could mean by the unthinkable. And I don't even want to say none of them, man, because it says manipulate kids. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm pretty sure this is about to be just terrible. And we're about to see. But before we see, my brothers and sisters, y'all know what y'all got to do. Get whatever you may need. Get what you need, Bean Team. We back to Mike from that chapter. Y'all got what y'all need. Y'all ready to go? Then let's and go. Hey you and welcome. My name is Mike, and in this old video, uh, we're going to go to a remote house in the Alaskan wilderness because there, my friends, a teen was clackety clackety in honor on her computer, you know, emailing away. She was talking with some monk. Wow. She had met online, you know, and, and romance had been blossoming on this long distance relationship. And guess what? This lad, he had an unusual request for her. But if she fulfilled it, millions would be hers. And so she was licking her chops. Only problem was that he wasn't exactly who he said he was. She was too stupid, though, to think about that at all. Now, let's give it a go. Let's give it a go. And get whatever you may need. So our uh, insane story, it begins on June 2nd, 2019 in Anchorage, Alaska. It's a place we've been to a number of times for a number of killers. Always stories that make you go, what the shit? And this is not any different, my friends. You know some folks, violent crime across the US, it's on the decrease. Broadly speaking, over the last two decades. Anchorage, Alaska is the exception. It has a violent mm. crime rate 60% higher than the national average. According to law enforcement numbers, uh, most male victims of homicide done by a stranger. For females, it tends to be intimate partner. This story did not help those numbers. Hmm. See, in the middle of summer, June 2nd, 2019, 19 year old Cynthia Hoffman, known to her family as CC, failed to show up to a prearranged meeting with her dad. Tim Hoffman. Tim was a handyman and would often take his daughter with him as his assistant to do various jobs now that she was finished with school. And so when she failed to show up to collect some money he owed her for work she had done for him, he immediately knew there was something wrong. But trying not to be an overprotective dad, he held off until the next morning when she still hadn't shown up. That shit just scary as a parent, man. Well, your child not answering the phone, you not getting in contact with them, but you try to be calm. You try to, you know, not be too old protective. She 19, you know, she technically grown, even though your child will never be grown to you technically. You know what I'm saying to you? But you try to hold off, man. You try to wait. You try to wait. Let me give it a day. She'll call me before the night over. Then you wake up the next day and you still ain't heard from her. That right there is when your heart will freaking drop. 
Tim went to the police himself and then reported his daughter missing and like right off the bat he owned the search parties went out. Tim joined and he he launched himself into trying to find his daughter. He spent several hours you know riding around town asking every single person he saw on the sidewalk, have you seen my daughter? Have you seen this girl? Filled with dread from the very beginning, it was like a sixth sense he had about his daughter that he knew something was not right. And in fact, even though she'd only been missing for like a day at this point, he came to believe she was already dead. Over the next Damn. couple of days, Tim began texting his daughter, sent his friends, including one named Angela, or Angel, as she often went by, you know, asking, have you heard from her? Where did you last see her? Blah, 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 blah. And, and Angela was texting back, you know, I really hope you find her. She was her best friend, right? Uh, please let me know if you find her and what I can do to help. And so the police and the investigators, they begin where they always do, right? What was Cynthia doing when she was last known to be seen? Who is she talking to? What, what's, when's the last time we, we know she was around? One of the last people to see Cynthia was her friend Angela, who told Cynthia's father she dropped her off here at a nearby park. Tim last heard where his daughter had been from the same concerned friend of his daughter's, Angela or Angel. Angela and Cynthia had been on a hike together before Angela dropped Cynthia off at Polar Bear Park in Anchorage. Angela, I don't even know if I believe Angela or uh, story at this point about dropping her off or whatever. But one thing I just want to say real quick to y'all is that this one of those cases where the father have no idea about uh, her having this online relationship with this dude this mystery man he don't know nothing about that so it just leave him in the dark even more because if he at least knew that she was talking to somebody online then he would tell the police like it'll go off in his head that maybe it's the that she was talking to but maybe the reason she was keeping that a secret from him because she knew she, she wasn't supposed to be doing that i don't know but all i know is if he knew he would have been told the police to look at that had texted Tim shortly after to let him know where she was and that in and of itself was a lot for Tim um, because he was like one of those dads who's like you will always talk to me I am your dad you know you will always be in contact if you don't answer a message or a call from me you're gonna get the boot so the fact that his daughter's friend was the one who was texting him not his daughter herself that kind of struck him as like hmm interesting and then he was texting Cindy he was trying to call her all going nowhere when dad calls you answer i don't care if you're in church and the holy pastor's preaching i don't care if you're at school taking the high school diploma test if dad calls you answer so on sunday when daughter number three didn't call didn't pick up dad knew what dads know in their gut when their child needs them and unfortunately tim's instincts were correct also angela was not who she claimed to be at all See, mm. the person Tim had been introduced to by his daughter, Cynthia, the person who, who he'd come to know as Angela or Angel, was in fact not her. It was 19-year-old Denali Dakota Sky Bremer. Now, Tim and Cynthia were far from the only people Denali Bremer was hiding her real name from. Denali certainly had her secrets, and but other things, though, she couldn't help but share. See, Denali also told her boyfriend, long distance guy though, a guy named Justin B, uh, sorry, Tyler, I guess he called himself. Denali called him Babe, but Tyler called Denali Angel. That's the only way he knew her. Now, despite this long distance relationship, she was in Alaska, he was in the middle of, um, of America, romance found a way to blossom beautifully so, and the two considered themselves to be in a relationship for a few weeks. It was Angela's mother who later approached the police, telling them, that her daughter and friend knew where to find Cynthia. See, when Angela had told her the full story, she didn't believe her. It was too crazy. But then she saw the news of missing Cynthia. Don't worry, I'll get to her story in a second, folks. The body of Cynthia Hoffman was found on June 4th, 2019, two days after she was supposedly dropped off at Polar Bear Park by Angela. The 19-year-old's body was found on the banks of the Eklutna River, not far from Thunderbird Falls, a popular trail route along the River Canyon, leading to a 200-foot waterfall. Cynthia had been shot once, execution Dang. style, her hands still bound behind her back, wrapped with duct tape. We're still investigating to find out exactly why she was bound and, uh, and then why she ultimately was shot. The only thing I can imagine is she was yelling her daddy's name. And it goes through my head over and over and over again. Police say...
Cynthia's resistance to whatever her and her friends were mixed up in likely got her killed. Shot, then tossed in the river after she panicked and threatened to call police. Threatened to call for help. This time I couldn't keep my daughter safe. I feel that I let her down because I keep all my kids safe. The same day Cynthia was found, Denali Bremer and her friend, 16-year-old Caden McIntosh, were called in for interviews. See, officers were very keen to speak to Denali, A, about why are you telling people your name is Angela when we know you as Denali, and B, what's the deal with the whole story you, you know, you told mom? Care to elaborate? Caden McIntosh, the 16-year-old boy, um, he was not a boyfriend, just a friend, he immediately broke and confessed to murdering Cynthia Hoffman there. Denali oh, Bremer, though, she is- Oh, god damn, that was fast. And see this, when we gonna have, I bet we finna have this dynamic of Caden just straight up just admitted to it, but now this girl, uh, Denali, AKA wannabe Angela, Angel, she probably finna be sitting on the line saying she ain't had nothing to do with it or the dude made her do it or whatever. But you you see what I'm saying, man? You got one side that said, hey, man, yes, it, we did it. And then the other side saying, no, I ain't got shit to do with it. I don't know what they talking about. Let's see. In another story, right? She initially said that she tried to push the blame onto onto Kate and McIntosh, right? She said the three of them, herself, Denali Bremer, Cynthia Hoffman and uh, Cade McIntosh. All of them had gone out to Thunderbird Falls. They were hanging out, they were having a good time. And you know what? They were gonna have a play a little gag. They were gonna take photos of each other wrapped with duct tape, right? That old one. However, after they innocently wrapped up Cynthia, Caden all of a sudden uh, took a gun from Denali. She had been carrying a gun for some reason and then executed Cynthia by shooting her in the back of the head for kind of no reason whatsoever. And Denali was absolutely mind blown by this. She was freaking out. But she kind of just went along with it because she was afraid Caden would murder her too for the exact same reason he had just murdered Cynthia. No reason at all. 16 year old. Man, goddamn, I'm just saying, if you gonna come up with a story, Denali, aka Angel, aka Angela, if you gonna come up with a freaking story, make it a little better than that. Y'all just went out in the uh, woods or whatever to play around with duct tape. Why? Who? who have my, my, my brothers and sisters, Bean Team. Have y'all ever played with y'all friends? I don't care what age you was. You could be freaking seven. You could be 17. Have y'all ever thought about, let's go out in the woods and then we just gonna duct tape each other hands? For what? That is crazy, man. She, I thought she would be a better liar than that. That's terrible. Harold has been charged with the murder. The victim, 19-year-old Cynthia Hoffman, was killed on Thunderbird Falls Trail on June 2nd. According to the findings from the investigation, investigation Hoffman went to the tra trail with 16-year-old Caden McIntosh and a friend later identified as Denali Bramer. The three walked to a riverbank where Hoffman was reportedly bound with duct tape to pose for pictures. Investigators say that after an altercation, McIntosh shot Hoffman in the back of the head pushed her body into the river and fled with Bramer. But that old story uh, was quickly whoo, thrown under the bus when the police had a look at Denali Bramer's phone. Mm. Which horrifyingly and terrifyingly and all those other adjectives you can think of, it not only revealed that she had killed him and participated in the murder and recorded her saying, oh, look what we just did. It also revealed why they had murdered Cynthia. Mm. This story is about people, you know, not being who you really think they are. Being someone on a chat room and then when the truth is revealed, oh boy, you know, they're not exactly that. You, that, can happen, that can happen to you, you know. Your personal and private information can get to places it really should. Mike gone to his commercial, y'all. Mike will fool you, man. I know he had his commercial. Shout out to Mike, y'all. And, and I, I'm ready to figure out find out why like i don't know i feel like the reason that they kill her is gonna be some crazy stuff like this can't be life insurance because they're not even related to her so it can't be that this time i don't know let's go a snapchat video on denali bremer's phone showed her apparently confessing to the murder the video was enough for detectives to call her back in the next day and denali's resolve that oh no i didn't do any of this Knowing that kind of shit. Um, her resolve lasted right up until the moment she was confronted with the truth about her babe, Tyler. See, mm. Denali was speaking to this Tyler, 
right, who she had listed in her phone as babe. And Tyler was telling Denali, you know, they'd been in a relationship for a couple of weeks and he said he was a millionaire, if you can believe that, right? Not too shabby. He's a millionaire living in Kansas. In addition to making the hairs on the back of their neck stand up, the conversations between the two would give the police all the answers and evidence they needed. The conversations between Denali and Tyler began fairly normally, up until a couple of weeks before, when they suddenly took a very disturbing turn. I gotta pause it real quick just so y'all can sit right here and read what the fuck that she told to uh, Tyler, y'all. I had kind of forgot about Tyler, too. I ain't even think about Tyler. I wasn't thinking about Tyler at that moment. But look what she told him. Look what she texted him, my brothers and sisters. He, 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 he. Yeah, I'm going to her right now. Okay, found a place to do it at. Gonna buy weed first. I want to get her high for it so she doesn't fight me. I love you. If that ain't the most maniac-ish you ever heard in your life, if you know the context behind it. Man, let's go, y'all. This is crazy as hell. See, Tyler revealed to Denali he had some very, hmm eclectic, unique, I'd say, unique desires and tastes. Probably have a good idea where this is gonna go. Tyler was so rich that he was willing to pay some serious cheddar cheese to have his fantasies become reality. Specifically, he was looking to pay someone nine million dollars to sexually assault and kill a young girl. Denali, whew, boy, she was licking her chops at that very big number and so, plan was hatched. You gotta be fucking kidding me! Hello YouTubers, I am Jack Hub Mark 7. I am here to show you the homemade M9 slot. So, M9 plastic slide. Detectives interviewed another friend of Denali Brammer's, 19-year-old Caleb Leyland. Leyland told them he knew about the $9 million offer from Tyler and he had agreed to lend Denali his car in return for 500,000 of the eventual bounty she would receive. This Caleb knew full well what they were planning on doing, what they were gonna do, that Cynthia was the victim of this murder plot, but he was like, whack away. And so between May and June of 2019, Denali Bremer, Caden McIntosh and Caleb Leyland, they became this little murder conspiracy plot to murder. One of their good friends, Cynthia Hoffman, in exchange for nine million dollars. There had also been two other unnamed uh, juveniles who'd been involved in the murder plot. They've never been named because they were underage at the time. This was not spur of the moment, this was premeditated for months, and they knew exactly what they were going to do and how they were going to do it. I mean, this is just freaking ridiculous, y'all. Just the fact that they actually believe that somebody's going to pay them nine freaking million dollars to just murder somebody. Now, like I always say, y'all, y'all know we do not put a price on life. Anybody life, everybody life is um is there's no um monetary value that you can put on it. You know what I'm saying, man? But I'm saying at some point you got to think it's a freaking joke. Who the fuck going to pay you nine million dollars, nine million dollars to do anything, anything. Freak the damn time out murdering. I'm talking about anything. Who gonna just randomly pay you fucking nine million dollars? A random person on the internet or Tyler or whoever the fuck. Like a, a person. Tyler ain't got no goddamn money. Tyler ain't got nine million dollars. I can understand that this a corporation, but that's a whole nother story. Like, dude, this is just a regular ass person. And you think they're gonna pay you nine million fucking dollars? That right there just pissed me off that they that damn stupid to even believe that from him. Like, they really believed it to the point where they killed Cynthia. Let's go, y'all. On June 2nd, 2019, the plan was put in motion when Denali Bremer invited Cynthia Hoffman to join her and Caden McIntosh for a hike. Bremer drove the three of them up to a trail near Thunderbird Falls in Caleb Leyland's car. Once there, they split off from the common trail and followed a different route along the banks of the river. At one point, McIntosh pulled a gun on Hoffman, and he and Bremer tied Hoffman's hands behind her back using duct tape they'd taken with them. Caden McIntosh then put the 9mm handgun to the back of her head and shot Cynthia once, killing her instantly. 
Her body was then thrown into the river. After the murder, Bremer and Macintosh burned several of Cynthia's possessions, including some of her clothing, her purse, and even her cell phone. Then Denali sent a text to Cynthia's dad, Tim, telling him they had dropped Cynthia off in Polar Bear Park, also known as Russian Jack Springs Park in Anchorage. Shortly after, Denali also tried to delete her conversations with Tyler, babe, from her phone. Shred the entire murder, the entire ordeal, Denali was continu continually sending videos, messages, pictures over Snapchat to Tyler. The two were in contact the entire time, and during the whole murder, while they were walking out, while they had Cynthia duct taped up, Tyler was Snapchatting back, do this, do that. Though he was physically hundreds of miles away, there was absolutely no doubt he was equally as responsible for what had happened. This is crazy. At least part of the plan seems to have changed along the way, though, as thankfully there was no evidence to show that Cynthia Hoffman was ever sexually assaulted. So now you have five youths arrested in Alaska. Denali Bremer, Caden McIntosh, Caleb Leyland, and the two who can't be named because they were underage for the murder of Cynthia Hoffman. And then, one Tyler, baby, babe, all the way in Kansas. And then, of course, the twist. Right? Um, well, there's a few. <laughs> the police, using the phone number of Babe, right, were able to link that phone number to, to an address. It wasn't like a burner phone or anything like that. The address showed up, if you can believe it, in Indiana, not Kansas. Lion bastard. It would then also lead them to... Time out, y'all. Time out. I think Mike just pulled some Mr. Balling ish on me, y'all. I don't think those that Tyler is a real freaking person. It ain't no damn Tyler. This probably is a freaking 56 year old man that's acting and doing all this stuff, man, because they never even met this person in real life. You know what I'm saying? Man? But they somehow they believed that they was going to get some of that nine million dollars. But beside that point, and if it if this is so, Mike got me on this. He got me on this, man. That, that, Tyler is not even a real goddamn person. This somebody else. It might be a damn lady for all we know. I don't know. Let's go. Do not any uh, Tyler. Uh, to a Darren Schill Miller of New Salisbury, Indiana. Hmm. I guess he does look sort of different than he did in the pictures he sent to Denali. Wonder if she was surprised when she saw, you know, how he really looked. Darren was 21 years of age, a graduate of North Harrison High School in Indiana. In school, he was described as very shy, someone who was bullied, and since graduating, he had no employment history. So, this would come as a surprise to Denali, I guess, when, um, when you know, he was revealed, because, well, you know, if you squint, I guess they kind of sort of look the same. More. More! So yeah, he stole those pictures off someone else, some random guy he found on the internet. Hence why I pixelated them, of course. <laughs> Sorry, guy. By the way, funny coinky dink, Alaska is the number one state in the entire US of A where people are most likely to fall prey to romance fraud. Yes, Alaska, number one catfish state. Come on, guys, I mean, I, I know there's not much to do up there, but please do your research. After the truth had been revealed to her, Denali seemed to go all in with the prosecution to cut a deal. It was also more, more than likely she was driven just as much by spite for Darren Shill Miller after realizing he had deceived her. And also, you know, guess what? He, wa he also wasn't a millionaire, if you can believe that. <laughs> Denali trying to cut a deal, I don't think it had anything to do with having a guilty conscience because I don't think she has one. Denali told the authorities that she and Darren Shill Miller as Tyler had been in an online relationship for months, and she truly believed him to be who he said he was. A millionaire from Kansas. She's pretty stupid. And the request from Tyler to murder, um, that wasn't the only request Darren had sent, because he's a real sick, sick SOB. Denali told them that Tyler had also instructed her to sexually assault two children. One being oh, aged no. 14 years old, the other only 8 years old. Oh no, I'm done. Now y'all, now we just went to a different level with it now, man. What the hell? We just added another layer on top of this case that's just like, what the fuck? This is some crazy-ish, man. I, man, I don't be as, I be expecting the crazy, but I don't be expecting it to be as crazy as it actually be when we watch these videos, y'all. Oh my god, man, what the hell? Court documents showed that Denali had gone through with it. 
In fact, that was a real problem for Darren. Uh, he was known as a real sick bastard. It was like an open secret even in his own home that he liked them young. So Darren Schillmiller was picked up by the feds before eventually being extradited for trial in Alaska, and he readily admitted to the whole thing. He'd intentionally catfished Denali, who he knew as Angel, and solicited her to kill her supposed best friend. The pair of Hey, I'll tell you about y'all. You ought to know some ironic shit in this goddamn story that I just thought about that is funny. It's ironically funny. They was both catfishing each other. D D Darren was acting like Ty Tyler, and freaking Denali was acting like Angel, aka Angela. You know what I'm saying, man? That is very freaking ironic. Now, it's terrible what ended up happening now. Don't get me wrong, being team. Don't get me wrong. Cynthia lost her life because of this bullshit. But that shit is ironic that they both was catfishing each other. I just hope both of them get life in prison, man. Even though she trying to take a deal and shit, I hope she still get up, end up in prison for life. Let's find out. I've been planning to kill Hoffman for three weeks before the murder took place. He also confessed to being in contact with Bremer all the way through the crime, as well as receiving several pictures and videos created throughout. There's a takeaway at this point. It's that for all the good the internet can do, it can be a very dark place. And parents would be wise to monitor the activity of their children online. Local, state, and True. federal officials are calling the crime heinous and shocking. And their response, aggressive teamwork. If you're listening to my voice, not in Alaska, but somewhere else, and you're sitting in your mom's basement and you're planning to do some type of crime, influence, uh, plan, or conduct a crime in Alaska, and you think you're safe because you're that far away, you're not. We will track you down, we will find you, and we will, we will bring you back here to face justice. If that wasn't messed up enough, get this, right? He even admitted to the police when he was taken back to Alaska that after the murder of Cynthia, Himself and Den Denali, who, you know, still believed he was Tyler at the time, had briefly discussed killing other people after they killed Cynthia. And he said that if she didn't kill more people, he would just, he was using blackmail. He was like, hey, guess what, I'll just tell him he killed Cynthia, so kill some more folk for me, please. Thankfully, she was arrested. They were both arrested before this could go any further. So Denali's motive for the murder of her best friend was money, the $9 million she believed she was going to get. Uh, his motive... He's a troll, you know, shits and giggles, that's it. Alaskan authorities indicted Shill Miller, Bremer, and McIntosh on a variety of conspiracy and murder charges, as well as, well, child pornography charges for Bremer and Shill Miller. The two juveniles whose names have not been made public were also indicted, along with Shill Miller, Bremer, and McIntosh. Their role in the crime isn't quite as clear, though it seems they weren't present when the murder took place. They were aware of what was happening, but not directly involved. Man, y'all know how at the beginning I was like, I had a lot of different thoughts in my head. Man, a lot of the thoughts came true, y'all. A lot of horrible things, man, from the child pornography, the child molesting, the freaking uh, murdering. Like, there's a lot of them that actually happened. The evil manipulation, like, crazy. Now, since the news broke, plenty of people have had lovely things to say about Cynthia. She was, by all accounts, a great person with a really bright future ahead of her. The only thing she was guilty of was being too trusting to someone she believed was her best friend. Darren Schillmiller, on the other hand, the complete opposite, a real piece of shit. Former classmates would tell local news how odd he was and that they found it, well, when they found out what he was into, nobody was completely surprised. I don't think anybody thought he would ever kill anybody, but the child pornography definitely, he had a problem there. Jaden Poley went to middle school and high school with Shill Miller, and she told KTUU he'd had a reputation for being a little off and increasingly a little creepy. He's asked numerous girls from my high school for pictures of their kids. KTUU found numerous online profiles for Shill Miller spanning many years across multiple social media platforms. The common theme, a strong desire to find friends and connect with women. Dozens of young girls came forward, revealing that Shill Miller had been actively soliciting explicit photographs from people who were way too young in the years leading up to the crime. He was known to relentlessly ask for bikini pictures uh, from, from women, uh, relentlessly ask young mothers for diaper pics. 
She said at one point, using the name Austin, Shell Miller confessed, quote, I have a problem I want to tell someone and I don't know how. And he then asked for pictures, she said, of her daughters during diaper changes as a condition of revealing the secret. Arnold caught on and cut things off. And he was also known to be catfishing, like to catfish people in his local area to try and get explicit pictures from them. I guess he's like, they obviously knew it was him. Uh, Denali Bremer, it seems, was the only person stupid enough to believe his catfishing. I just gotta say real quick, my brothers and sisters, what what we on reaction being to yo 502, I have never, we have never uh, watched a video together. And I have never heard of this in none of these videos where a freaking person asks a mother, asks a mother to send pictures of their daughters or their little babies while they changing their diapers. That is some beyond crazy, sick ass shit that got me want to throw up, but got me kind of like numb at the same time. Like people out here like that really exist. Kind of got my heart kind of like scared. Like, I don't know, man. Kind of like got a little crazy feeling in my heart. Like, damn, somebody out here is that crazy. Like for real. Let's go. Let's finish it up, y'all. Wow. Court should find that Miss Bremer engaged in one of the most serious crimes that we have in Alaska. She executed Cynthia Hoffman in a murder for hire plot. She conspired with numerous other individuals in and outside of Alaska, including juveniles, forever altering everybody's life. She may not have pulled the trigger, but this never would have happened if it weren't for Denali Bremer. Denali Bremer pleaded guilty to murder in the first degree. In February 2024, she was sentenced to 99 years in prison. The hurt I caused you and your family, I can never rectify in any way. I understand it hurts. You lost a precious child and the community lost a daughter as well. I am truly sorry for my role in your loss. Kate McIntosh, who was only 16 at the time but charged as an adult and admitted to being the actual trigger man, also accepted a plea deal and is awaiting sentencing, but is expected mm. to be given a life sentence. Caleb Leyland, whose car was allowed to be used during the murder, he'll be sentenced in June of this year, 2024. And as for Darren Schill Miller, now aged 25, he pleaded guilty to soliciting the murder of Cynthia Hoffman. Darren Schillmiller never spoke at his sentencing hearing. Instead, his attorney read a letter in which Schillmiller acknowledged what he did to Cynthia Hoffman, known as Cece, was wrong. Every single day since the death of Cece, I have felt extremely horrible and wanted to apologize as well. But the state showed little compassion for his tears or the fact that Schillmiller had been diagnosed with a low IQ, saying he was smart enough to fool Denali Bremer online and manipulate her to carry out the murder. Exactly. He convinced her that he was a 20-year-old, good-looking young man that had won the lottery, had millions of dollars, and he used that money to dangle in front of her and get her to do whatever he wanted. He, too, was sentenced to 99 years in prison. Frankly, Mr. Schillmiller enjoyed it. He could have given him as few as five years, but gave him 99 to serve. And there you have it, a really horrible case full of flyers and snakes and, uh, well, catfish. Uh, I guess that's literally what this is, the catfishing murder of Cynthia Hoffman. Of course, extremely sad for Cynthia, you know, by all accounts, a great person whose only crime was, you know, um, believing that her best friend would just suddenly murder her, which I think we can all be guilty of uh, having that. Not having that thought, um, but there you go. And then you got Darren Schlimmer, who's like the opposite, you know, end of the scale. Uh, real piece of shit. Sick bastard. There's a lot of adjectives you can use here, folks. Denali and Darren, the worst people imaginable. And now, especially for Darren, he's in the worst place imaginable. Oh, Thank man. you so much for watching. Uh, really means a lot to me, folks. I appreciate you being here. Um, hope you enjoyed this old video. And you know what, the next video will be up in a couple of days, so look forward to that. As always, if you're looking forward to, or looking for more stories, please check out the That Chapter podcast, which you can find on all podcast platforms.
But until then, you know what? Just take care of your, your children and yourselves. Because I love you. Thank you. My brothers and sisters, that one right there had so many twists and turns, y'all, that I was not expecting, man. Damn, man. Hey, I got to just clap it up. I got to clap it up for uh, 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 Mike, first and foremost. It's always a delight when we come back to Mike. And I also got to clap it up for they ass getting them 99 years in prison. You know what I'm saying, man? Because I was scared, y'all. I was scared that one of them might get off. Uh, Denali, what a Daniela, whatever the freak her name was, aka Angel, Angela. I was thinking because she's trying to uh cooperate with the police that they may go light on her, but they ain't go light on her ass, and they ain't go light on Darren or D -D 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 Darren, whatever the fucking name is, aka Tyler. You know what I'm saying? Glad they went off on his ass too and gave him 99 years, man. But all these twists and turns and all this evilness that was revealed as we went into this story man y'all and like i said man it's like from the beginning what i was saying like just reading the title i had a whole a lot of horrible things going on inside my little tiny ass brain and come to find out in this tiny brain a lot of that shit came to fruition my brothers and sisters jesus freaking christ man and some of the things i heard like him this dude was sick man like sick on another level like i said that we have never ever reacted to watched over here together my brothers and sisters this man wanted this lady was texting women to send pictures of their daughters while he while they diaper changing them what in the i mean that is just another level y'all of some that i never heard that is some what the is going on type of video for real man what the y'all and mike hit me with a little mr balling y'all and some of y'all probably seen it coming some of y'all probably seen it coming but i did not see it coming i had forgot about tyler man i ain't think about uh tyler but not only did i not think about tyler what mike really got me at is when he uh revealed that tyler not even real tyler just a random dude that darren or whatever the fuck his name is googled on the internet or stole somebody else profile pictures and was sending them to her and that whole nine million dollars thing like why the y'all think somebody just got nine million dollars just to give to y'all y'all don't know nothing about him never seen his face no nothing no nothing no nothing but y'all just believe this random person gonna just get y'all nine million dollars for killing a random person you know what i'm saying man it's not even really like a hit he like i don't care who you kill whoever you kill if you kill him i'll give you nine million dollars that make damn sense to anybody man like mike said she just stupid but not only her all the people involved in this is just freaking stupid and they got 99 years them two but i'm hoping that the rest of them uh get they uh due diligence of freaking 99 years you know what i'm saying man i hope they have to spend the rest of their life in prison too but I digress. Let me call down my brothers and sisters. Go on, let y'all go, man. This was just a great one from Mike, man. It's always a delight when we come back to Mike. We already know that. I appreciate y'all coming on back. And I just please, 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 please hope before y'all leave that y'all hit that like button, comment, subscribe, and do all that if you ain't did that yet. And I'll see y'all tomorrow. And I don't know who we're going to go to. Well, boy, we've been cooking this week, and we're going to keep on cooking. But until then, my friends, I also need y'all to remember this. Love, peace, and happiness. Stay safe. Don't stop. Keep going. Yeah.